All right, so it's four. I'm just gonna go ahead and get started, even though they're still doing their morning treat. So we'll see if they just go do position after. Um, but anyways, I had stuff going in my head, so I was like, I gotta hurry. It's like my head starts getting so full and it starts feeling like it's overstuffed. Um, I, when I got up, I have a horrible fucking headache. Oh my God, my head is killing me. Uh, the sneezing and coughing and stuff. Oh yeah, because I do want to say something about the new sickness. So a long time ago, <clears throat> it was one of the times they were doing some MRI on me. I've got, I've got so many MRIs, <laughs> like it's crazy. Uh, so many CT scans and stuff uh, for my brain and my neck and then of my stomach and stuff. So when they, I'm pretty sure it was one, I mean, I can't remember if they were checking lower and then they caught a vision of the upper or if they were checking something upper and caught a vision of something lower. But I got a call and I it said that um, uh, my extra, my scan had come back that I had nodules in my lungs and I was already a nurse. And so I knew, you know, that, that was bad. And so I was crying. I had to go in and get another test and I was just, my kids were young. Um, you know, uh, my husband was the only partner I had, so I was like, yeah, you just accept a part of this life. Uh, but anyways, I was, uh, super upset and I thought for sure I've got lung cancer. What the hell? How'd I get lung cancer? Because I smoked weed a couple times when I was a kid. Even when I smoked my parents' cigarettes, I didn't know how to inhale. So I was like, I don't even know if I even inhaled weed all the time. Like, I don't know. I wasn't much of a smoker. Hand me a pill, I'll pop that motherfucker in. But, you know, I wasn't a big smoker. And uh, one of the things, too, is I would uh, get sick when I would smoke. And I would uh, cough a lot. And my dad had taken me in to get an x-ray. And the doctor said that I had a nodule on my lung. And that I needed to quit smoking right away. And this was like I was like 16 years old. And so I stopped. Because I, you know, took it serious. So anyways, years and years later. So that was when I was like 15, 16, 17 years old. Somewhere in there. And, uh... And then, so now I'm like, I don't know, 35, 37, something like that. And um, so I'm thinking, because I can picture the house. I was already a nurse. So I had to be in my 40s. I was probably like 45. So this had to be close to the ending of the, this marriage too. Because it ended in this house. It ended once. But then um, he just always had a hard time letting go. He was sure that he loved me, supposedly, but every time that we would get together, it wasn't the love that I found loving, <laughs> so wasn't my kind of love, and uh, so anyways, um, so this test came back, and I had all these uh, nodules, and I had to go in and get a lung ex examination, x-ray scan, like specifically to look at my lungs, <clears throat> so they did, and then they uh, called me, and they told me that a lot of people, we all have these proteins inside of our lungs and, um, not, not everybody. Like, uh, some people have these proteins and you can find them in their brain. You can find them in their lungs. You can find them in these different places. Well, now we know a little bit more about these, uh, things, these proteins that are, uh, actually parasites. So... Anyways, <laughs> they told me <clears throat> it was totally natural. It was totally normal. I didn't have to worry or anything. And so, you know, and I think later, I think in some brain, one of my brain scan, I had so many brain scans and shit because they kept trying to prove that I was faking my brain injury. <laughs> Like, they thought I was faking it, even to the point that they said that I faked it all the way to just go to court because I thought I was going to win big off the hospital. <laughs> it was like I didn't even get a lawyer for a year and a half. I mean, my dad had to just keep putting pressure on me and putting pressure on me. And that's why there's no way I'm ever going to say anybody's all good or all bad. Everybody's a mix. You know, even people who you think are the worst people, they've got good inside of them. <coughs> Give them an opportunity. 
<coughs> but one important thing is, is um, you can't carry around your your anger and your uh, your problems as your badge of honor, where you think everybody needs to bow down to you because you've been through some struggles. It's like we everybody's been through struggles, and if you're gonna go around in the world acting like you're the only one and everybody owes you something because you've had a hard time. You're going to end up finding your peers in prison or down in the streets on drugs because it's a dead end. Everybody gets handed situations and things in their life so that they can overcome them. So you can champion yourself. So you can show yourself what you're made of. To get all hung up on poor, poor me. I'm the biggest victim here. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about me. Uh, the world owes me. Uh, that's a dead end. That's, you know. Just just assume if that's going to be your energy that you're going to put out, you're going to have bad relationships. Even if there's people who want to be consumed by your problems, they're in, they're, uh, they enjoy drama. And at some point, they're going to feel you're trying to override their dramas. It's, it's just not a, it's not a positive approach to life. And, uh, you know, and my, you know, my guides walked me through so much of that stuff leaving these things behind, leaving back your struggles, like, you know, you're not your struggles. You're not the things that have happened to you. You can take those things and turn them into gifts, or you can sit there and, uh, you know, in your own little mud puddle and stomp around and scream and yell because your puddle's muddy. So anyways, the, um, okay, so let me think. So, I was not even okay. So the sick, okay. So the sickness. So the sickness is, um, I guess these there are little kids getting the same results. Is why I had that they don't have symptoms and stuff. They just have, and I didn't have any symptoms. I wasn't coughing or anything like that that I can remember. And um, that um, you know, I don't even know when I had Hep C. So I do know. I don't know when I had mono. I do know when I had Epstein Barr though, and that is when I'm assuming I had it. it. Was when I was so so weak and I couldn't get up. I'd have to sit in the shower, and then I'd have to go to work all day. It was hard. Stella, that's all. Go lay down. I told you I was doing my work. <sighs> She'll have a fit. Have a fit because she just wants to eat and eat and eat. <sighs> There's something going on, man. There's something with the energy. I don't know. It's weird. So, um. And every fucking thing keeps glitching and breaking and stuff when I try and do it. It's wild, man. And so, um, here comes the drama queen herself. God, I love that girl so much. Little Jack, you know, he's a hard one. <laughs> Plus, he came in at an awkward time, but oh, God, yesterday he really got me. Oh, I lost my goddamn. Oh, I was so mad. Oh. He, uh, he, I've spent all this time trying to reinforce the fence. I keep him on his little lead chain thing, whatever those long things are. And then, you know, I mean, that's no fun. So then I let him off and, you know, he's going around the yard. He's doing real good for uh, like a day. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. You know, now I can trust him. He can go out and play. And, um, and then Ms. Drama Queen, she just wanted a friend to go out and bark with her. So the neighbor comes out, Mr. I'll call the police on you. I want to kick your ass, neighbor. He comes out with his dog. Stella always goes wild for his dog. And his dog is super old and it's real huge like Stella. But it's super, super old. It's like him. Like, I don't know how old he is. He could be younger than me, but he uh, is, you know, like a he, very old man-ish. And so um, he, he came out with his dog. And he was standing over there, and I guess he was um, waiting for my one neighbor to come out. And so they're down there barking, and this is where, you know, he won't listen when I call his name and stuff. Yesterday I went out and just did training, just calling him his name and tell him to come, and every time give him a treat, tell him how great he was. So we'll see, but when he gets himself so worked up, he just is like, he can't think, he can't hear, he can't, it's just it's like, oh my God, damn boy. I guess Winston fucking vibes. So then, um, it's like, dude, oh my God. I'll make up little songs during the day about you're about to lose those balls. And then I feel like, oh, that's so mean. I can't just take his balls off. 
I can't just dis disform him in case that maybe it would make him calm down. But, um, anyways, I don't know. That's, uh, something I gotta figure out for sure. And he's growing so fast. It's like, look, I better hurry and figure it out because they don't like to do it when they get big. And, you know, that's all a big old fucking thing too because I just heard that it's really bad for dogs in their development to do it before they've done like, um, before they started puberty. It's like taking out, so it, it can cause them other problems. I just saw some vets speaking out about that. So anyways, oh my gosh, I got so many things right now. <coughs> so of course that guy comes out with his dog. I haven't even seen this neighbor and he's standing over there, still over there barking. I'm trying to get Jack's attention. Jack loses his mind. I don't even know how he goes through the fence like he does. It's like fucking magic. And suddenly he's on the other side of the fence and running. So as soon as I saw him get on the other side of the fence, I had to come in and get my shoes and my cap, or get shoes and my coat. It's fucking frigid out. So I go uh, and start walking out there and I can hear him. He's fucking just on that neighbor who calls the police on me, who called the police when Trixie jumped over the gate. It's like, these people are such, uh, I was like, oh my God, why, why? Oh God, I've been cursing. I'm like, take me out of this game, please. So, um, anyways, the, uh, so then the neighbor comes out and this, this is like, oh, what? Where is the awareness of people? I swear to God. This dog has been in my yard for like three weeks at least. I don't even know. Maybe a month at this point. I don't know. I have no truck fucking time. It is not just from yesterday. And he's been out here barking at people nonstop. He's gotten out of the yard several times. Every time in the same neighbor's yard. Where I keep going and reinforcing that fence. I'm going to have to go and just, just fucking get a shit ton more rocks. And just make a whole nother layer of fence under there. I was like, I, yeah, some of them I was thinking like a bit of board up and kind of block it and just make it fucking, just ghetto it up, man. I was like, do what you gotta do. So anyways, I'll just, um, you know, monkey fuck it, whatever. So, uh, the neighbors are like, oh, is this your dog? Well, I, uh, nobody knows where this dog came from. Cause I'm standing out there. Hey, hey, would you, cause he, the dog Jack's now that he's out now, Jack's scared of him and he's running over to the fence, but he's in a panic and he's running over here and just barking his head off at the guy. It's like, dude, you're in his fucking yard now, you little jackass. So I was like, I, I kept trying to tell him he was scared, but then he got some treats and he was trying to get him, you know, and got, uh, got Jack to come up and he said, oh, he's so sweet. And he's petting him and he's sitting there eating trees. So I was like, oh yeah, real sweet. And he's like, this is your dog? And I said, yeah, Stella needed a friend. So <laughs> call this guy, I rescue this guy. Even though it's not like I didn't go down to the rescue place. I mean, that was where he was headed. That was his next stop. But I didn't take him. That was, they were, they were headed that way. <laughs> so then, um, I can see why. I mean, he's very challenging. But I still was like, fuck, if I would have just got him when he was eight weeks old, you know, when you can just start the training right off the bat. When you're trying to break all these bad habits, it's just harder. So, um, it's just challenging, man. I swear to God. And, uh, you know, one thing I just definitely noticed, because this pops into my head all the time, because I had an altercation, not a real altercation, but an uh, interaction with a neighbor. And, um... I, his dog was running down the road and then I told him he had to get it and then he was like I wish he would just keep going I wish he would just be <laughs> and I was like oh, I, uh, I, I feel like I judged him for that I'm like oh my god he's just not that nice <laughs> it's like now I know why now I know why yeah I had the perfect dog so of course I can go around being like oh my god people are so mean now I got a Mr. Challenge over here and now it's like, okay, I get it. I get it. I had to go through this so that I would see, you can't be judgmental on these people on the dogs because I do it all the time on this stuff when I see this horrible stuff on the dogs and I'll be super judgmental. Now I've got this one that's so challenging. It makes me want to, oh, oh, God, it takes a, oh, it's like a, oh, oh. you got to pull all of your techniques. You got to do your breathing. Uh, but, you know, also I'm not somebody who's going to hide I've never been somebody who's going to hide my emotion. That's something that drove people crazy my whole life. And um, husbands, moms, dads, everybody. 
It's like, I'm not going to pretend like I'm not mad. You got to let that steam out. <laughs> I'm not going to, you know, I mean, I have slammed some doors and dub out. I'm a door slammer. But, um, you know, I'm not going to go punching holes in walls and going up and, you know, hitting people or screaming at people. Or just, some people, I think they hold their tension in all day long. And then anybody who talks at them, they're the ones who get it. You know, I think we're seeing a lot of that out into the world right now. I can't even believe this. Some of the footage I've seen is like, how are they even getting this on? Like, what the fuck? I mean, we're seeing people fucking be murdered. Like, it's, oh my God, I can't even believe the footage I've seen. This guy, I don't know, probably, I'm just guessing. <laughs> Walmart parking lot, I don't know, though. Could have been fucking Neiman Marcus, I don't know. But a uh, pretty heavy set guy. He's going up to a car. There's all obviously this altercation is already going. There's people going. This guy's running. He runs over and he goes in through the driver's side window, and you can see him just punching, punching. Then this car pulls out, goes, and then starts going and runs over the fucking guy. Everybody's screaming. It's intense, man. It's like, oh my god, I can't even believe some of this shit. And obviously Ireland, they've, I've gone full on, full on in the, uh, the, I don't know if it's civil war, like, I don't know what you would call it. It is, um, it's the people against the Muslims, I guess, against, I, I don't know if they say, hey, what religion are you, or if they, uh, just categorize anybody who's dark or persuasion that they're on the wrong team. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure that there's black people and, uh, uh, well, there wouldn't be Mexican people, but I'm sure there's other uh, people from other places whose parents immigrated there and then they were born there, but they're not natural Irish people. So, and they, so there could be in different colors and whatnot. So I, I don't know what, uh, but that incident that happened with the guy and, all, and, and see, these incidences are meant to create this. This is what they want. This is this is what they want. And at the Macy's Day Parade, you know, I don't think any of those B-O-M-B-S's went off. But they had enough going on in the streets. Like, the people got the, the situation that they wanted. Dude, you're going to go back into your crate if you don't stop. And, um... It, it, but he did go into the crate after his incident. But the dog guy was trying to hand him over to me because I was like, well, just put him down and to go under. And the dog's going crazy and still is right there just blah, 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 with the loudest fucking bark that you can imagine. She's so fucking loud, I can't even tell you. And um, so he's trying to hand uh, Jack over to me and Jack's going crazy. And then I got worried because it looked like, oh my God, his balls are stuck on the fence. And so I'm trying to like lift him at the same time. He tries to lift him at the same time. Jack jumps over my thing and I can't hold him. And he goes flying down from my height down to, it's my neighbor. I don't know. He's 6'2 or 6'3. He's real tall. Uh, and I'm 5'8 or 5'9 or something. Depends on where you measure me, I guess. <clears throat> so he's handing it down. So it's a big drop. And fucking Jack goes flying down on the ground. It's a soft ground. But, um, and the, the guy is a wild man. I mean, he goes jumping up. He'll jump up and you do that and he'll flip back and he runs and jump. Like, I, I was pretty sure he wasn't hurt. And he, you know, just got up and went. But I had to grab, and I I'll grab him by the, you know, like a mom does to the puppies. Grab him by the back of the neck hair and then walk him in. And he knew right where he was going. He knew he was going to crate. He was like, oh, no. He's like, jailbreak, jailbreak. He's trying so hard not to go in. He's like, don't leave the yard. And so he had to go sit in there for a while. And then he has to be out on the thing. But today I'm going to try and, you know, do some funky stuff to the fence. It's like, dude, just always, he just his concern is to try and get out. And then as soon as he's out, he's like, what am I supposed to do now? Stop going out, dude. You go up to bark at the guy who's going to call the cops on me. Then I kept being like, oh, great. So animal control is probably closed, but I'll expect him tomorrow because I've got the wild, crazy dog who barks and jumps over the fence. Yeah, and your dog, this guy's dog is on a 10-foot lead all day long off of his porch. 
And then, uh, these guys' uh, dogs stay in the house. They're not, they're never, I mean, the guy's got a whole yard and doesn't fence it, doesn't do anything. His dogs never go out. They come out to go on a walk, a potty somewhere in someone else's yard. And then, um, because he gets real mad when people walk by his house and then dog goes potty. Because that's where our first fight came, was my daughter was here visiting and she had a runner a black lab and he ran over there and pooped in the guy's yard. The guy, I thought the guy was joking and he was fucking serious. I was like, what in the wackadoo shit? You're out in the woods? I mean, you got fucking, for sure cats go and go bathroom all over our yards all day long. You can smell cat pee. Dude, okay, hold on. He's gonna go back and he's gonna bite me. Okay, time's up with you. Now you go back in here while I'm doing my work. Go in there. Nope, gotta stand up. Get your leg in there. There. Oh, and yesterday in his brand new harness. So he had a brand new, so I was, I had a hold of the harness. I think I had a hold of the harness and that, so I was walking him in. And <coughs> um, so I put him into the crate with the harness on. Brand new harness, big mistake. So he just decided to eat it off of him. So I'm trying to salvage it. I was like, that's like $35, dude. I was like, oh my God, damn. And so now he has to be on the little thing if he's on the lead. Cause that's all he came with, that. And to order the other thing. <coughs> so anyways, and I got the kind that goes in the front uh, cause it's supposed to be better. That's what Stella has. And then I keep seeing all these ads and stuff. How that's supposed to be better for, for them following commands and for their health. And, um, okay. So I had another thing flying in with that. With, uh, oh yeah. The TikTok shop stuff. Oh my God, the TikTok shop stuff is blowing up. I had no idea because I didn't go on to it. Even if I saw something I was interested in. Because I got like the um, the castor oil shampoo bars. and but So I'll see something on there. I'll see the ad, but I don't get it off TikTok shop. Because I don't trust it. And um, so I'll go look online. And then I'll go look on Amazon. <laughs> like, Amazon's as corrupt as motherfucker is horrible but you know they've already got all my information i've already been hacked by them and they give me free postage so i you know go order off of them and so uh i don't get stuff off and i don't go and look and even when i was like fucking so many and now now this is even more mental because before it was just all these people who were doing ads for tiktok shop no, buy this and buy this and buy this and um oh you gotta have this oh you i mean their whole fucking thing just became a goddamn commercial their whole fucking content it's like okay <laughs> i don't understand people i swear to god um but this is blowing up in their fucking faces and i had no idea about how bad it was gonna get like when i was talking about it before like this is wacky i hadn't even gone in this fucking arena part of it because i didn't even know this part existed so apparently um oh but the other thing too so now it's not just that now there's literal commercials for uh all of those little special pills like one after another <laughs> like, it, it's just wacky i just i just don't even get it uh, so anyways the um so there's this guy uh, I've caught on to who keeps doing all these videos talking to the TikTok shop people. And he's kind of a flame. I, I like just saying flamer because, um, but if you don't know what a flamer is, is back in the day, the gay guys who were more, uh, you know, flamboyant and out there, we're, they were just called flamers. And it just, I don't know, it doesn't make sense. They're just a little, you know, they got a flame underneath them. They're just a little more, a little spicy. So he's like that. And he, um, so he was saying that, uh, you know, <laughs> you guys, he so he's talking to these people about the, how upset they are. So a lot of them, their TikTok shop was just taken. And a lot of them, they've taken their money. They're not giving them their money. And uh, so a lot of them, they closed down their shops. They've taken their money. And there's more things 
uh, going, but there is, I guess, apparently, these people, they were, they would go and, like, print off uh, pictures of Taylor Swift or something and make their own calendar and sell it. And a lot of people were buying these knockoff Chinese products. Uh, like, there, I guess there's a woman who was selling these knockoff Stanley cups and she was selling them for five bucks, but they were all made in China. They're not really Stanley cups. And that they, um, and this guy was also making the point, which I know this is true, because when we did our floor at my uh, house that I had with the last husband, that was his house that I ended up losing because of the divorce and stuff, that he, um, we, we were redoing that whole house and we had redone all the floors. All the floors were the same. And so we were going in, we were gonna do another floor upstairs or something. So we went back to get that same wood. And they told us that it had been pulled off the market because it was Chinese made and that they found out there was all this toxic chemicals and shit in it. It was full of, um, and Winston had horrible allergies, had horrible skin allergies. And we were gonna have, um, if they use like formaldehyde or some some weird stuff in it in their product and it wasn't legal here and so um you know they couldn't come over here and make us pull all our floor up but you know we should pull all the floor up and replace it and it, you know it was not we'd have to go through a suit to get our money like it was a whole thing and my husband was like <laughs> he went about that and um and I don't even know, you know, if I put up much of a fight or if I was just like, well, if it's deep in there, you know, is it really going to come out? Like I didn't really realize the significance of all of the chemicals at that point. You know, this was, this was, I was still on, um, I was still married to him. So, uh, you know, I had already gone through the brain injury, but I was still in the relationship cycles. And, and still in my health crises and stuff. So I still had a lot of stuff going on then. And um, and those floors could have been adding to it. I'm sure it was a lucky, lucky thing that I got out of there. And then, the, you know, the, what you call it, person. Like, how many people have health issues and they don't even realize it's their own homes? And, uh, you know, it was a house flipper who got that house and went in. And it was, like, half done. Like, that's what my husband was trying to start a business doing. And where I got all those fucking big business loans and shit for him. I owed so much money that I, I had to pay it when we got divorced for his stuff. So, um, so I had all these loans I had to pay of his for this business. And so he, he was trying to do the house like, you know, really, you know, like, like a flipper. And so, um, you know, the house was like, it was uh, so much was already done so much so i only i you know i'm curious of what this guy ended up doing but i think he lived there for like a year when he did it but i would like to go in and see you know how it ended up being but <clears throat> anyways he wouldn't know about those floors that people would move in he would have kept those floors people would have moved in and then they could be getting sick off those floors so but anyway so i know that that's true when he had said that about that that your products have stuff that's not allowed in our country and so then if you're ending up selling those products say he said for instance if their cup has lead in it and then over here we are not allowed to sell things with lead in it and then somebody gets sick from said lead then you are held responsible and that and this was in a show it was even in a comedy uh what was it i think the guy was um something it seems like it's uh not Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck, though, is also a famous person out of Dazed and Confused. Like, you, when you see famous people in old movies, it's like, oh, wow, they were in this movie all that time ago? Like, I've seen a bunch of people in old movies. <clears throat> and when you see the movie, you know, I don't know, I just, I can't wrap my head around when Nate Zellweger is still in the Empire Records, but... No matter what, she wasn't in it in my my life and Marianne Williamson wrote Celestine Prophecy, so whatever. So, um, anyways, the, oh God, I just bounce around. So, anyways, the, um, oh God, let's see where I was. <laughs> oh, yeah, so anyways, these products. Uh, oh, yeah, the movie. It was, um, 
the same guy who played Zoolander, I think. But it could have been like Owen Wilson or something. But it's more of like those kinds of people in this movie. And I think he sells something on like QVC or something and gets real rich. And then people start having a problem with it and starts blowing up or something. And so then he gets sued and loses everything. And, you know, I mean, it's right there in the movies. But anyways, uh, so these people all just jumped onto TikTok shop. They all thought like... I'm going to get out there. I'm going to make a lot of money. And this guy points out too, there was a lot of you guys just jumping on. You didn't have any ethics. You didn't care. You just wanted to make money. And now it's blown up in your faces because that's the energy. That is the energy that is out there. And if that was your attitude, then that is the energy that's going to come to you. That is exactly what he's saying. And, um, and I, this is what I keep trying to point out, but as you see this stuff happening, it makes so much sense. And so, uh, you know, like the Walmart lady trying to go and do, you know, be a do-gooder. And it's like, that is not what the universe will bring you, the people that want you to, to affect, to do something with. You don't go out, search. The universe brings to you. And, um, but sometimes, you know, even when the universe brings something to you, sometimes you gotta make a call. <laughs> you get them adrift. So anyways, then, um. So, you, uh, let me see. So, you have these girls now who are outraged and stuff. And the guy's like, you guys are in big trouble. Like, some of you are going to jail. There's people who are already getting pulled in. Some of you, like, you have gone over copyright laws. You have sold fraudulent products. You have, you know, all of these things that you guys have done so you could make money and get rich. He says some of these people have sold hundreds of thousands of dollars in TikTok shop. And you know why TikTok's doing it, because how much money do they get? If these people are getting 100000 in TikTok shop, I made 500000 So, um, then the, the, um, so these people, he said, now you have reached a felony level. That's a felony. You guys are facing prison time for this shit. And you guys are all having a big fit about your TikTok shop. You guys are in trouble. And he keeps trying to, to get that point across. And it's like, oh my God. Like, I knew that TikTok shop was going to blow up, but I, I didn't even know that people were that. Uh, you know, I mean, I learned some about that when I did the movie with my brother. Because I didn't understand all that stuff. Like, I could have made those same stupid mistakes. But that's why you got to go out and do lots of experiences so you learn and you have more reference and stuff. But, um, uh, you know, I'm just glad I didn't get caught up in any of that bullshit. Uh, but when uh, we were doing the movie and I was doing the clothes and it was, a uh, it was a couple of things that we had to get permission about, but I found this really, really cool, like a vintage t-shirt of the Avengers and, um, or some kind of, uh, what is that group called? It seems like it starts with an M, I'm not into all that, those kinds of things, um, Marvel. So it was Marvel a logo and then this cute old t-shirt. It was really, you know, worn out and stuff, but it was like perfect for the girl to wear. And so, um, anyways, uh, you know, we sent in all the stuff. He was explaining to me, he was telling me about copyright law and all the stuff. And we had to, you know, do permission. Well, we couldn't get them to give permission. <laughs> They were total dicks. They wouldn't give permission. So we just did things like block out the t-shirt on part and stuff. <clears throat> so there's little things you can do. You can't just go and use it. But apparently a lot of these people were using other people's images, other people's logos, all sorts of stuff. And then selling fraudulent products. So <laughs> I guess way beyond what I thought where there was people who were getting um, tons of orders and then uh, they're, uh, you know, getting all these people taking cuts out of their stuff, uh, and that they were going to be losing money. No, this is way beyond that. So it's, uh, like wild, just like Ireland. So in Ireland, it is, oh my gosh, there is bad. Uh, I, one footage I had seen that there was a bunch of uh, immigrants up in a building and, um, somebody started on fire. There's, um, all these people in the streets, all these Irish people, there's a cop car, and they're just going after that, too. Like, 
I, I don't think these cops are going to get far with these people. It's like a do total mob it has happened. People are outraged. They've reached their limit. It's, but that's what they keep trying to do is push us to our limit. And, uh, but that is also a big purge of this dark energy because you got to look at this on all different levels. You know, everybody wants to get real stuck on the visual, the, the three dimensional, the, the level that we are, we're breaking free from literally. So that's why, you know, there's multiple levels, multiple ways to look for it. Look at the situation. It's like every step back, you see something more. <clears throat> that's what you got to remember too. It's like your higher self and the other, the watchers and stuff like that. They aren't bothered about this stuff. It's their step back. They see it in different. When you're caught up and you're in it, you experience it different. That is the incarnation miracle of being able to go in and experience the trauma, not just watch it. You don't learn the same watching as you do experiencing. So that is the incarnation, what it's all about. <clears throat> you know, you know, all these different people saying all different things. I don't know. You know, you got to go out and you research into reincarnation, make your own decisions, how you perceive what it all means and how it all works and stuff. You can't just listen to everybody. Like everybody has, like I hear so many strange opinions, so many strange things that people say that it's like, oh, I'm not in alignment at all with what they're saying. So um, I, get, I do get some clips. I, like I just saw a clip of Bashar and stuff. There's people out there that'll hear them say something and I'll be like, yeah, I, I get what they're saying because we're saying something really similar. I even think with Abraham Hicks, I think some of the things that she says that people are just taking them differently and she may, she may even take them differently than how she, it's in translation. So that is, um, you know, why you, it's best if you go out and do your own translations of information, you get in touch with your own guides, you talk to your own team and stuff. But the more that you step back, which is stepping into your role as your, so your, your own savior, totally, you are, um, yourself, but pulling in more to yourself, pulling out, it's like being emerged in an orgy and that thinking you're a part of that whole thing until you step out and step out and step out and look and see and you can see more of what's going on because you're not a part of all of this cluster fuck you know you're only inserted as much as you insert yourself and you don't have to be inserted like you i mean i think it's clear i think a lot of other people are seeing and talking about it but the, the uh, you know, these kids who think that they're out there doing something good by doing this, uh, this big demonstration that they did at the parade, you know, covered in B-L-O-O-D. Well, it wasn't real, I'm sure. And, and laying out all in the streets and stuff and with their chants and everything. And I'm sure they think that they're bringing a lot of awareness and stuff, but they don't realize like you're blocking off bridges. You're causing tension. You're cause you're, you're creating, they showed me this morning. It was like, uh, they create angles, like in the energy of flow, they create angles. And so they take the flow out of the energy and they cause tension and so they are not in flow. There's a way to flow and it has, um, you know, for one thing, allowing everyone their own battles. Like I, it just blows my mind how they get so stuck on just this one flag and keep making, it's like, this is like a complete all over. Like it's so bad what is happening in the Congo. It's so bad what is happening at Lahana. It is so bad in all these different places, this cleansing that is happening of the planet, of the people, like our awareness, are talking about it. Um, but going out and causing problems for people who aren't involved makes no sense. Like if you really want to get involved, go over to their place, go get on their streets, go fight. <clears throat> Trying to think that you're going to uh, create the industrial complex to listen to you by creating uh, uh, wars and chaos in your own streets. That's what they want, dude. That's what they want. Like, come on. So you're, we play right into your, their hands. It's like, you got to see you're being used. Uh, but you know, that that's a part of the teenage arrogance that has to be expelled out that they have to see. You guys don't know everything. You don't know near as much as you think, you know, 
<clears throat> you just barely even started living and you've been born, birthed into a very toxic environment. And so you've got to be working on your cleansing <laughs> and not be, digging in, not becoming an, uh, immer an immersion. It's like there is a, not this deep immersion into the problems. You know, you've got to... It's just such a, it's such a huge transformation. And, you know, I think a lot of these teenagers and stuff that are playing these roles, that it is an extension of their parents, because I'm seeing so much of that kind of stuff of uh, so many of these kids are out of control, but their parents are just like, I mean, there was a big problem in our whole society where everything turned just like where, you know, I knew my parents weren't that, you know, bothered with us, you know, when we were kids, but we loved being outside. I mean, we did not want to be inside. And if you were inside, you knew you had to clean and stuff. Your mom would find you something to do. You didn't, she didn't want you in any more than you wanted to be in. So she did her own thing. Now, I don't know what she did all day. I mean, maybe she just vacuumed every room and I, she wasn't a drinker and uh, she was she's way more of like even me making a joke about Jack Astor you know I'm inappropriate well you know she's more of a oh these virgin years don't talk like that but then she'll start cussing up a storm it's funny I'm glad when she started doing that where she started just and, and she gets into those like old lady cuss things too <laughs> where they just start merging a whole bunch of just words and the bastard and all <laughs> cracks me up um but she does do that but there's a lot of things that are always like oh no no it's uh like oh you couldn't talk about sex with her or something like that oh <clears throat> that's something that you don't think about i would you, you dirty minds <laughs> think about sex it's like so i was raised in this like i don't know it was, it was just two poles like mr perv and miss victorian over here it was like ah uh, so, um, anyways, the, um, but, but, you know, for all of us who now we're called boomers is, um, but we got to have a childhood that was free, man. We got to go outside and just experience life and, you know, create teams. And, you know, we had, you know, we were a neighborhood group. Like we were a whole a group, the neighborhood kids. There was not just one, but we could all merge in. But there would be several different ones. <clears throat> because there was, um, what were those boys called? There's like three Italian boys, like the C Cassinis or something. I can't remember. It was something like that. Um, which now is just like, I just look at things so different. But, um. And here's my dad over here. It's like, I think all these neighborhoods have like gangsters in them and shit. But uh, so, um, and they had a pool. And so, but as girls, because it was all boys. So I never got invited to the pool to go swimming. My brothers went over there and went swimming all the time. And I'm sure some other boys around the neighborhood. There might have even been some girls because, you know, my close friend was living like next door to him. We were scattered around like a few block area. And so we'd all go out and meet and it's just like whatever would be going on. Like I know I wasn't ever going over to their house to go swimming. And, uh, but there was other kids like we would go, like I sat out there with Jeff off it. We were whittling away. That's how I almost cut my finger off. Then I, um, and always, I was always out riding the bikes with the boy. I was always, I was like, a, I don't know. I think I was kind of tomboyish or something. Uh, because I was always out doing that kind of stuff. Like I was always, there was houses being built. We go climb around in those. I was always barefoot and I would always step on nails. I was always, uh, getting, oh my gosh, I had, I stepped in all the ant nests. I stepped on wasps and bees all the time. I was constantly, constantly getting hurt. And then we would ride our bikes and go down and towards these electric fences and you had to try and stop before you hit the fence. I did not like, I, I've been electrocuted a few times and I don't like that feeling at all. Even when they tried to make me do this, 
I don't know, I think they said I had neuropathy or something at one point, and they told me I had to go do this test to see or something. And the test is to sit and do these electro, to, to electrocute you all over, to stimulate your nerves. He did one or two, I was like, hell no, hell to the no, I can't, no way, I can't do this. <clears throat> and they were having a fit. Like, they want their money, boy. You're set up for this test. You're going to get that. And I was like, no. There's no fucking way I can sit here and be electrocuted like that. And so they have the doctor come in and stuff. He was talking to me. And he said that the, uh, every person who's been electrocuted, he said they're always the ones who can't do it. And so I was like, yeah, there's no fucking way. <clears throat> no fucking way. So I don't know about all that. But, <clears throat> yeah, you can't after... Being electrocuted, yeah, they can't go in and just do little electrocutions all over you. It's just like, it, you just feel, oh, it's horrible. It's like, hell to the no. <laughs> That's a big fat no for me. So, oh, and they got mad. I was like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, there's a lot of things I have bent over backwards to please somebody else, but not being that. Oh, hell no. And, and so, anyways, the, uh, so, okay, now where am I in my storyline? Okay, we got the Irish over here trying to break into the building, started on fire. We got the Muslim people up in the windows. We got the people on the street. We got them going after the cars, the cop cars. We got utter chaos. We got all the teenagers over here, uh, the do-gooders, the SJWs. You know, well, they don't have time to focus on their own problems. I mean, their parents are just assholes anyways. Like, I literally saw this guy. This was blowing my mind. Like, some of these people, like, just blow my mind. Okay, so this guy, I've seen him so many times. And he is, um, he's got long black hair. He's got big, uh, he's like a pretty burly dude. He's got this big black mustache and beard. And, um, I think his hair is really curly or something like that. If he's, I think his hair is big. So I think he pulls it back or something. And, uh, but he's got this, um, uh, this, I don't know if you saw him walking and be like a swagger or something. He's got attitude. And um, he's very, I don't know, kind of condescending arrogance, I would call it. And so I would, uh, so I would hear his videos and I would think, yeah, that makes sense and stuff. But he has very uh, condescending and uh, arrogant. And so, <laughs> so this was wild. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. But it, uh, so he's got this attitude of like looking down on people, it feels like. And always being this smug, like, kind of talk. But he also has a lot of things that, you know, people need to hear. Because I do that too. And it's like, well, people gotta hear it. Like, my guys are very much like, oh, sometimes you gotta be the bad guy. <clears throat> and so this guy, you know, yesterday, he was like, so mad. This is so ridiculous. <laughs> His mom. I, I can't even remember the whole thing. I won't be able to do it accurately. But it was like his mom wasn't cooking Thanksgiving because the pans are dirty. She won't go in there and clean those pans. She's getting mad. She's telling us that we are supposed to clean the pans. I'm supposed to go in and clean her pants so she can cook. She doesn't even make my brother do anything. She doesn't make him move out. This looks like an adult, adult man. Never in a million fucking years do I think he lived with his mom and his brother. Like, how old is this fella? He looks like he's like 40. <laughs> like, maybe he's 19. I don't know what they've done to these people. But so, he's, and there is no way when his brother he doesn't have to do anything. His brother gets away with anything. He doesn't clean up anything. <laughs> It sounds like something that I would hear my kids say when they were like 12 or 13. This is just wild. And so, and his mom's refusing to cook Thanksgiving because they won't clean these pans. She'll go in there and she'll stand there and clean those pans. And it's a big show. Like she's cleaning and stuff. He's like, she expects me to go in there and clean these pans? Are you fucking kidding me? I'm not going in and cleaning these fucking pans. I've gone in a couple times during the week and I'll clean, you know, some stuff here and there. But I'm not going to go in and do all this. Like, ice and not all coming on me. And it was just like, okay, dude, but if you want your Thanksgiving dinner, you got to show your mom some appreciation. Like, you just think, like, she, you're, like, people don't understand their 
energetic vampires. You want people to give, 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 give. What are you giving back? There has to be balance. And it's like so many people are just here sucking off the, the teat of the universe. Like, just give me, give me, give me. I need more energy. I'm so empty. Please, everyone give me. And anybody asks anything of them and they're like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you expect me to clean a pan for me to have Thanksgiving dinner cooked? <laughs> it's like, it was wacky. And it, it was like, it was... I, I mean, it was to the point where it was like, is this satire? Like, are you for real? I mean, he was for real. It seemed for real. I mean, he's a really good actor. I don't know. I was just like, oh my God, the world is whacked. This is just wacky. And so the, um, I got to think of this because I saw some other wacky stuff. Oh, I had just seen Deron. Uh, he was right uh, at a scene, but he didn't know what was going on. But it was definitely on a bridge one of the, you know, intersection bridges in LA. So I was up on a bridge, some kind of huge thing, a huge wreck or something. He kept trying to figure it out. He said, I don't know what's going on. Maybe we'll hear about it later. But he kept thinking it was a car and it gotten in a wreck. But then I thought, okay, so do we have some of those people like that we learned about, I don't know, like what, 20 years ago or something that I, I didn't know there was people who did this back uh, I don't know. I guess I did hear about it during Vietnam. What I guess that what that was crazy, yeah. Because there was women who would be strapped, and how, they would even have their babies strapped, and then they'd go up. But I don't know if it's the same thing in their culture as it is in this other culture. Of like, Allah, here I come. You know, like I'm doing my last good deed. I'm killing all these bad people on my way out. <laughs> so they go strapped in to situations because they're doing their last good deed to get to heaven or wherever they're going with this guy. I think, I think that guy's Allah. I'm not sure. But I could be getting them all mixed up. But I'm not sure in Vietnam when they were doing it. I don't think they were doing it as their last good deed, but it could have been. But they, I think, would have been more of a Buddhist or Hindu. It could be Islam. Like, there's so much of these different, like, it's just, it's ridiculous. All they want to do is just hand you a deity and say, hey, this is the guy telling the truth. The rest of them are all crazy. It's just so everybody will argue. And then they do it, you know, it's like as if they, if we were in the United States, it would be as if, which they've tried to, you know, get us paired up against each other for other reasons. Uh, you know, they use, you know, the sides of the aisle hats. They use flags. They use different things to create division. But over there, it was used a lot with religion. And here, like that one guy was saying, like, I mean, I don't know anybody's religion who lives next to me. I don't know where they go to church. Usually, I've been invited to church by people, and usually I'm always, you know, I don't go to church. Um, uh, you know, and there's churches around me, so, you know, uh, I don't know. But, like, if you're in some other places, it, you know, you like they were, that one guy was saying, like, a Catholic and a Protestant would be fighting over, you know, being Catholic and Protestant. So, fight over their fence because... You know, the Catholic is right and the Protestant is right. You know, so they all just get up their own ass over their right about everything because they their religion is right. And this other person is just an idiot because they're a Protestant. You know, so I, I'm sure there's still some people who are like that. I'm sure there's fucking, I'm sure that goes on. That was a thing back in New York a long while ago. And I'll tell you another wacky thing too over Thanksgiving, which I feel like it is such a programmed, I, I feel like we're in, we're running the holiday program right now. People are just mindlessly on the program. I mean, even if they don't have any money, hopefully everybody's not shopping today. Hopefully really people are making that impact that supposedly that the corporation was so scared that we were going to do because they depend so much on their fourth quarter that if we uh, boycott that that's going to have such an impact on them. So hopefully people really are sticking to that. But there's a lot of people who aren't awake, who are just, you know, trying to create the perfect Christmas for their kids. And so, 
um, you know, I have daughters that are, so a lot of people with kids, a lot of people with young families, they're just trying to, you know, make it. They're just trying to survive. They're just trying to do it and trying to, you know, create that perfect family because they're all running programs. So the, um, but we're in the holiday program and you can see just like the whole thing with the food. Uh, it's just, it's so it's so sad and people just are so programmed into it it's just automatic response automatic response automatic response don't need to think nobody needs to think well you get a chance to complain because you got to complain about the crowds so you know there's uh, no no thinking needed you're just running the program <laughs> and so um it's it's been going many years no problem everybody does the lines up like the the new kids are being programmed presently so it's just, uh, you know, this program is smooth running. <laughs> so uh, anyways, the, um, but it was wild because, so you have all these people. I was really noticing the program on the food thing, how you just automatically at this time of year, you start craving this certain meal that you've waited all year for this meal, especially coming out of summertime. We've eaten lots of salads and stuff. And it's like, oh, I can't wait for that uh, bread and gravy and stuffing and, um, you know, the green beans and yams and stuff. So you get all uh, thinking about like that. You start running that program. So um, anyways, I was thinking it's just so wild because I think, you know, nobody's out there celebrating Thanksgiving. They're running a program. They are getting the food that they look forward to. They're having everybody get together because it's running a program. And, uh, you know, this is what the consumer, uh, the corporation wants is so they let you off work so they want you to keep on the program because then you know i mean they got the black friday cyber monday and and plus everything's already started black friday i mean what a scam that was i mean they start black friday fucking in july so um you know black friday's all here black friday's all there so it's just you know they use subliminal triggers in people's minds oh it's black friday sale it's like Black Friday sale, Black Friday sale. Oh, it's got to be a good deal. Why not go to the Dollar General? Uh, so, anyways, the uh, but I had seen these people. So there's all sorts of emotions, all sorts of things being on TikTok about Thanksgiving. You have the people who are indigenous talking about the slaughter of their tribes and stuff. You have um, the are just all different things, uh, you know, a lot of energy coming from a lot of different directions. But I had seen one guy who was doing a video explaining where the holiday really did come from, that it was a pagan holiday. And he went back and was explaining all through the history of the history of it and how it started. And it was a harvest and it was the god of the harvest. She has a name and stuff. And you have to... Uh, take from your food and make this big harvest meal to offer to her so that you'll have a good harvest for the next year and it was you know that's what the thanksgiving was originally was a pagan uh pagan ritual for the next year's crops so giving the gifts to the goddess of i don't know mother nature or something she, she has a name, though. It's not Isis or something. I don't remember. But it's one of the gods. And, you know, there was all these people who they thought were gods. There was people who were far advanced to them. You know, it was somebody who could come from the sky, come down and tell them how to do their crops, how if they water them, if they plant these seeds, because this has happened all throughout history. And then they would think, oh, it's a god. We've got to worship her. Let's, you know, they were just always primitive thinking. But look around us right now at the primitive thinking. So you can imagine how much more primitive it was. Like, it's wild. <clears throat> so, anyways, the, uh, so he was explaining about that, how, where it had come from. I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. And so it's much older than, um, you know, it's because so much of our history has been based on lies. Like, we definitely 100% know that they've slaughtered all these tribes. But I don't think that slaughtering was way, way back. I think the slaughtering was... Uh, I mean, it's going on right now. Like, they're doing it right in front of us. So, I don't know. There's so much of this stuff that's been going on all through the 1900s. So, this isn't old shit. And so, the... Um, 
Uh, but yeah, the slaughter is real and taking the lands and, you know, isolating them into creating ghettos and isolating them and stuff. And, and then it's just the story that we were told how the blue people, this was their, what happened to them, but really they're, they're living high on the hog while they're doing it to the rest of the world. <laughs> it's like, good cover story, people. So, um, anyways, the, uh, Okay, hold on, because then I've got all the head swimming around now. My stomach's just growling like crazy. Um, okay, so let me think back where I was. Okay, so this other guy, he uh, he was really uh, upset that they keep trying to make it about that it is uh, as, like people are celebrating a slaughter. And so he was trying to give the history that he knew of the Thanksgiving. And so he said it was a bunch of Dutch people called the pilgrims who were trying to break free from the, uh, you know, it's uh, this I've seen in a lot of these movies, uh, the Amish and stuff. Uh, there was a certain group of people where it was like, it was getting too wild and getting too crazy over there. So they wanted to go and be free from, you know, religion, tyranny, and they wanted to practice their own and create their own villages and stuff. And I've seen this in some older movies about this Amish community, there's older one, not, I don't know about these ones presently, but there was ones that were very tight knit sect and, uh, you know, a lot of bad stuff is allowed when you get into those groups. And then they form into LDSs and all sorts of shit. So, you got, that is all a real thing. But when, so when they came over, though, originally, uh, they were trying to get over to a certain place. And they and landed on Plymouth Rock. And so they, I'm pretty sure that that was, and so they were, they landed at Plymouth Rock, was way not where they had wanted to be and so it was a tribe of people who were there and now I'm trying to think of the numbers he was saying surely it wasn't it had to be like 50 and 40 surely it wasn't 50,000 and 40,000 no it had to be like smaller numbers it had to be like 50 and 40. I don't know. I'd have to go back and listen to his story again. I'm always bad on numbers. But um, he said that the Indians made a big, uh, I think they were maybe having a celebration or something. Or No, they had a welcoming to these people. <clears throat> they did a welcoming to these people. So they didn't have very much food, but they made this big feast and shared it with these pilgrims so that the pilgrims wouldn't go hungry. So they had this big feast and that's what they call Thanksgiving. And that's where it came from, this beautiful ceremony of two cultures coming together and eating. That's gonna make me cry. Is that so people can't, people could do it. They have such a hard time now. But, uh, and to even sweep away the real meaning of coming together and uh, celebration and thankful and uh, gratitude. And then you have all these people, you know, who want us to all be pulled into the, what their tribes have gone through, which, yeah, we can all feel the outrage and stuff. Some of us even feel that we were in those experiences when they happened, but it is, um, it is your history, it is your story, it's your, uh, you know, we all have our own. That's the thing is when they, I heard Bashar say it earlier, we're splitting into all these other realities. But I think it is, I have, I've said this before, and I see it as we were all living in different realities. Everybody was living in different realities. Especially when you're just, you know, finding out there was people who had no awareness of what was going on in the Middle East. It's like everybody was living in, I, I, like, like I, this just hit home to me when I was a kid. Like, I was having a different experience than little kids in Africa. It was just shown to us all the time. You know, little kids in Africa can I mean, man, like I said, I adopted. I did that Sally Struthers thing. I had, I got the little picture, you know, I wrote the little letters. Like, I, uh... 
and now to know that it was all you know a bunch of fake bullshit but anyways the um uh but i was aware that there was other kids live in different realities they weren't having my life they have very different life all over the place everybody's living different and then people just assume that people are all living like them no it's very different everywhere and that is a part of the awakening is coming into your awareness of where you really are outside of your own little world it's like I said, it's like stepping back, stepping back, stepping back, seeing bigger, seeing bigger, seeing bigger, more perspective, more perception, more opportunities to see who you are. And so it is, um, it, but now it is like becoming aware of this multiple, it's like a multiverse theater, you know, it's uh, what, what, what we've been in. And then to see we're coming together as the people now. We've been separated. We've all been separated. We're coming together as a collective. And not everybody will become a part of that collective. Because it will only be a certain energy. That energy will become the collective. The energy that I'm, you know, trying to shine a light on. And so there's a lot of different energies. There's a lot of different realities being created. And, um... So I'm of this creating this reality, which I know that there, I'm not the only one here who it, that there's a lot of us and we're out like a, in a grid, those of us who understand about this reality and we are trying to connect our energies. <clears throat> and I think that's where they get this concept of light workers and stuff. But it is like the reality that we came here for to bring forward. So we came here with this reality is our destiny. This is where I've been headed since I was a little kid. Like there's lots of people who've been having dreams of like the end. Like everybody's got their own stuff. But I I was being prepared for this my whole life. Like so anyways, my lips are really dry. When I did that though, I just remember because there's this um black guy and um he is uh has a channel and he but when he's talking he's always licking his lips and he has really big lips and tongue and so he's always licking his lips but i don't know it does i <clears throat> you know i just i don't know like people who think stuff like that is weird it's like have you never seen that before or something so he was getting ridiculed for that the other day and they were made somebody was making fun of him and calling him a lip licker or something like that i was like god people are mean it's like a part of he can't help that his tongue and lips are bigger you know that's his tongue and lips but so that means he's not allowed to you know you know so that's part of his it's part of his persona he does that like everybody has their own little persona <clears throat> you know, when everybody should be allowed to. And so anyways, that just reminded me when I licked my lips. I was like, did that guy being talked down on for that? It's like, God, that, some people are just so mean. But I think some of the meanest people are bots. I think they're just instigators. They're out there to make us feel bad about ourselves. Just like, <clears throat> like the guy yesterday who was ridiculing my facial structure in order to make fun of these other people. <clears throat> And where it comes to the point where you feel like you, you know, you got to go into, I didn't do this. God did this. I didn't do this. I didn't go to the, the, no plastic surgeon did. God did. So I didn't go in and get implants. I didn't go in and get the sucked out of my cheeks and whatever else they're doing. I don't know. I think they're making some cut or something. I'm not sure. Uh, it's, it does look pretty extreme on some of the people. So <clears throat> anyways, but just like that, you know people out there making fun of faces like that because you know how hideous that they're doing this it's so ugly <laughs> it's like, okay thanks i just that's what you want to hear so um anyways the uh let me think for a sec so the the energy okay so so the people you know who are like me like the uh People who have this vision it is uh, the creating of this reality. 
And so it's creating a, a collective, a collective energy. And so it's all of us coming together. And like the things I've said that we come together on are unity, love, uh, but you have to love yourself. You have to love yourself. And so you have to, you know, set boundaries for yourself. You have to take care of yourself as your prime uh, primary. <clears throat> you can't be trying to get other people to like you by giving to other people so that you can try and get people. That's artificial. So you have to, <clears throat> it's a different approach. So you have to uh, just like come at it differently. <clears throat> and, and, you know, and it's something you got to catch yourself on because I have caught myself several times, you know, like, uh, well, I'm doing this and uh, not being appreciated. And then, like, nope, reel it in, reel it in. No, it is, I'm doing this because I want to do this. And if I'm doing it for any other reason, then, you know, stop, stop what you're doing. Don't, there's no game plan and this new reality that we're creating no games <clears throat> no I'm none of this I'm doing this and you owe me because I did this for you no don't do anything unless you're doing it for you and that is a big one so and if you catch yourself feeling that way you've got to do the mind aer aerobics to get yourself into the place of not being resentful and angry and thinking that someone is making you do something you don't want to do you got to work that out and so <clears throat> Man, my throat, I'm clearing it, clearing it. Uh, but that is um, the new sickness. And I think it's in all the thing. There these, if I were to wager, I would say, like I have been saying, that they were fogging us uh, with um, everybody all over the place uh, with some kind of um, larvae or something. Some kind of larvae has been in our foods and stuff like that and so and i think in these things and so they put this stuff in us and then they use other toxins and chemicals to feed this thing to get it to grow and then i think they've even are using frequency to do things to, uh, because there's something with the gr stuff that with certain frequencies they can make it move and stuff so there's a lot going on like there's a lot of different science experiments going on inside of us with these people you know are doing so the uh, but i think it's like that you know larvae inside of us growing and then taking home up in different areas inside of us which they would be tracking all that too they would 100 percent, you know and if we had availability to that we would find pockets of kidney pockets of uh, lung pockets of brain and it would be due to the environmental toxins but they also they've gotten pretty good because of the uh, ownership of food distribution that they can take something and then spread it far wide without us being able to see clearly like oh there's a pocket here of a certain sickness because um they had so many lawsuits of that i've met people <clears throat> like that one guy who i had met who grew up on the Spokane River down from the paper mill and everybody who grew up there ended up with the same kind of cancer and then they tried to shut down the paper mill like it was the whole thing but uh, papers are owned by the richest people because that has been a part of our media information you know I mean they've had way control of it way before TV like they were in control of it before that and um does it mean the Smithsonian and stuff these old newspapers it's all, you know, before that, it was just strong-armed. You know, they'd go into communities to drop a rich person in and then get their strong-arm henchmen out there to control and uh, contain and consume. Uh, you know, they take the energy out of all these towns. They get control of sheriffs and stuff. This has been going on for fucking so fucking long. Uh, it's in all the movies. I'm sure that's what that show Yellowstone's about. I'm sure if that it shows that kind of stuff, it's because it's all part of the awakening for people to start understanding about the control and how long it's been going. So you can, you know, the more you step back, the more you see. So the, um, so anyways, the, uh, so, um, so those of us who are here for this reality, 
than uh, that we're creating. This age of Aquarius. This is being created. And it's, uh, it's hard to, it's to understand all of it unless you do keep stepping back and stepping back and stepping back and start understanding yourself as a light being, as a soul. Stop understanding yourself as the person, this character you created, the avatar. Start seeing yourself as who you really are. And so, and there still is, you know, control over our, our human vessel, over this glove, you know. It's like they're pushing some buttons on it. Uh, you know, they're, they're getting our gloves dirty without us having any control. And they're getting it inside the glove. They're getting some prickles in there and stuff. So, But your body will keep healing it and healing it unless it's meant to take you out. If it's meant to take you out, it's going to take you out. Like you, you can try and save, you can try and do everything possible. And they, the, everything that they want you to do is spend money and stuff because they know, they know that if you're meant to go, you're meant to go. That's the, that's their hidden truth. That's the things that they know, the mysticism. That's what I try and get across, you know, that they understand this. They understand the incarnation. They understand the energy. They understand the stuff that people, you know, that people don't even question it. Like, well, I've never even thought about what I'm, you know, never thought, why am I here? <laughs> like they told me, I'm, well, I'm, it's like, come on, <laughs> come on people. <laughs> God, so um, <clears throat> so anyways, the uh, with the people who are here for the creating of this uh, destination is is the people. It's not it's not like I'm creating it. It is, it, it, and I don't even you know I'm not the first thought of it. Even I mean, Age of Aquarius was talked about all, you know, back in the seventies. This is a universe creation. It's not something I made up. It is uh, something that was always going to be there. <clears throat> but God, <clears throat> jeez. But the um, oh, I did just drink a big cup of that Mullen tea, um, and that clears out. Uh, is it the Mullen? I have so many of these. <laughs> Like my tea or my my root powder tea, but I also have a bunch of leaves that I put in a tea bag. I put all the root powders in, and then I swish them around, and then I put uh, my tea thing. I fill it with a bunch of uh, leaves and stuff. Um, so, anyways, I've, that's maybe why it's coughing up because <sighs> I drank that, and um, but that's good. Get all the stuff out of. The but uh, even if you cough stuff up, unless you choke it up like a fucking cat trying to choke it out of your fucking throat and spit it out somewhere. <laughs> and then <clears throat> one day I tried to do that too. I did everything. I was like, I gotta see what's coming out of there, and it didn't look like anything. It just looked like snot. Uh, but usually it doesn't come up that far. It only comes like right to the top of the esophagus part because you have the top of the bronchial because you have like your esophagus goes down and then it splits and you have the part that goes to your stomach and you have the part that goes to your lungs so it's and it's down here <clears throat> so when it, you cough it up it's like it goes right to that spot so then if you swallow it just goes into your stomach and then you can hope that the stomach acid is going to do them in but uh, it, i think that uh, that's why they're jacking with our uh GI system so bad is so that our GI system can't fight it and then so it can go anywhere in there and start growing in wherever it feels comfortable like you can get those parasites anywhere inside of you and then when you try and filter it out you can get, you can get in your kidneys you can get in your liver you can get it in your spleen and you get like it just can go anywhere it's just traveling through like Tron inside of you <laughs> looking for a home and so, um, and they're doing it on purpose, like, but, uh, you know, you've got to realize your body is fighting these sicknesses on its own, you know, and if you're feeling worn down and tired and stuff, it's not the time to go to them and say, what can I do? What can I do? No, you got to just rest. Listen to your body. Like my body will tell me if it wants juice, it will start having this craving of like, oh, I need vitamin C. I need vitamin C. Like I just need some orange juice so bad. Oh my God. Like, I feel like I'm going to die without orange juice or something. And, and sometimes, like, 
The other day when I was feeling so faint, I made a big pot of beans. And they are such good protein. Like, you could live off beans and rice fur. And so, um, I thought something that I felt so much better. And so, I always listen to my body, what it tells me to make or to have. And then, um, and then I'll feel better. But it's not like I, you know, because I still feel like shit. I feel shitty. And I'm sure I'm fighting off, you know, big things. I mean, when you see that their next sickness, and they've already I've got all these dogs dying from it, and their next sickness, I guess, in Chinese hospitals and stuff, they're, they've already got a lot of deaths. Like, they're moving it over here. It's all it's all a, a, a bullshit. <clears throat> we already have this stuff. It's like, you know, one spray, and everybody, you know, is dying of cancer. So, the... But they're going to do this as uh, a sickness or it's because they've already got it set up so that they can come in your house in some states and just take you and lock you up. And and uh, somebody else did a video about those, the housing thing I had talked about where they had put up all these little tiny houses <clears throat> and called it, it's not a camp, it's, uh, you know, it's like a rescue place. It's like when things go bad, you know, that they've got all these little places so that we have a place to go like after Katrina or something um but every single one of them is set up to be gassed it's creepy and somebody went through and was showing all that I was like oh see somebody else saw and I thought the same thing because when I saw it the um, it, how it was with the piping thing outside I was like oh my gosh this looks like a little multiple gas chambers or something like crazy yeah, real easy to just wipe you out, you know, but that's why they want you in their captivity because there's parts they take and they want those parts fresh so that, you know, they even put that in the movie, we're fresh, we like a fresh, we want a fresh, and that is like, um, you know, I mean, how many people at this point are depressed calling that 988 number in Canada, oh yeah, come down, come down, and then they'll just talk them into getting in the goddamn maid and yeah, just because they want that fresh organ, like it's like disgusting. So, um, anyways, <clears throat> when we're talking about the age of Aquarius, when we're talking about the good things, when we're breaking free from all that, oh, but you know, you got to see all that. Oh God, it's horrible. Look at look at how people turn. Look what happened to people. And just like I was saying, like back when I was a kid, how we had so much fun and we loved being outside, and then it was just like all of a sudden. All this group, all these kids, and to me, when I see them, I always think these are kids that are like 10 years younger than me. Uh, so I don't see people in my age range talking like this people who I think that are late 50s or early 60s. I see people who I would say are probably more like mid 40s. Uh, them saying this, it, you know, that they were just discarded by their parents, that they were forced outside. Nobody was ever looking for them. Nobody cared about them. <laughs> they were just, you know, hostages to a horrible life. And they, they, and they're resentful. And they don't get along with their parents. And, um, you know, I'm not saying, you know, I get along great with my mom. I mean, I say all the time, we're very, we're different poles, totally. Um, uh, and there's, there's things that I just don't, to me, it's like, well, I'm not going to try and change her. And she's not going to change me. And that is where we usually just drop the white flag. Because you're not changing me and I'm not changing you. And, um, you know, I, but I think that that's how she looks at me. Like, I need a lot of change. And I need to be very different to be acceptable. And so, um, you know, I'm sorry she can't see me for who I am. But I think there's a lot of people who don't see me for who I am. I think that they're going to see clear here. You know, I, I don't know. This message is just coming in too strong here. Oh, it's just nonstop. I can't even tell you how often I get this message. It's weird. It's like knock, knock, knock on my brain all goddamn night. Even it's like, okay, I get it. Okay, I feel prepared. I feel ready. It's like, goddamn, I've got all my outfits and stuff. I'm ready. So, um, anyways, the uh, so. <laughs> Uh, but it, it seems like in that period of time is when things went down. It went real south. I think that, uh, you know, it's around the time when, you know, the fraud 
brought out the AIDS and uh, the HI, you know what I'm saying? And uh, so when he introduced that into society and society went dark and I could see it coming, I would say it and people, they, they just don't want to hear. They never want to hear anything. Um, they just want to jump on. And, um, but like when I, I, cause I would go to the gay bar and go dance and it was like sex orgies in the hall, man. Uh, you could see that our society was turning a different direction. Uh, we were coming from this, like, you know, uh, if you even thought about sex, that you were a fucking criminal. Like I had talked about that movie with Suzanne Pochette that I had seen, that that was the programming back then. Like you, a woman who's going to go out and have sex with a man is going to end up killing her mother. <laughs> it's like extreme. Like if you have any interest in sex and you're going to cheat on your husband, your mom's going to die. You know, everything is like the, it was very extreme. And then all of a sudden it just flipped and it went the other direction. And people were just like, well, they're not going to tell me what to do. I'm going to just have sex with everybody. And nobody even needs to do anything. Just here, come have sex with me. Sex just took off. The corn industry just took off. It was just, and it all went together. And it all went together at the same time when the drugs came in. And the, the, the infiltration into the more um, poor communities. They say, hey, this is a way out. And uh, it just turned our society so dark. And it went so deep into that darkness. Like that darkness that started was like an entry to a cave. And our society went into that cave and followed. I mean, up there, the light holders were the these corporate leaders, these instigators, these idols, these people who were taking people purposely down the wrong but a lot of people, like, like I think a lot of actors and stuff didn't know, you know, they were caught up in their own inner dialogue, their own inner uh, doubt of themselves, their own ego battles and stuff. So they were all caught up in their own stuff. So they were easy targets. They were easy to use. And then, of course, you take an insecure person, making them to an idol, then, um, you know, some of them... Uh, I mean, I, when I see The Rock out there and him still saying stuff, it's like, dude, you got to see. You, you've already been seen. You've already been seen. We, we know what you're about. So just, you know, stop it. <laughs> just stop now. Um, you know, it's, uh, you're, it's over. <laughs> your time's up. So bye, Rock. I guess you shouldn't have sold out your own people. Uh, and I don't know when he did it. You know, who knows? Uh, if it was, uh, you know, maybe his own family, because that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with gangsters. So you're signing contracts with gangsters. You are becoming the puppet to people who are gangsters. So, um, anyways, but, you know, you get a big payoff there for a while. <laughs> Everything's great. And then when they call in the, call in the favor, it's like, oh, Really? Really? Was that the favor? <laughs> really? And some people are just like, oh, well. And if you don't, I mean, all depending on what, you know, they're using you for. Uh, if you don't, they'll just fucking kill your family. They don't give a fuck. It's like, you do what you're told, motherfucker. So, um, you know, and that's a big energy to break free from. Big energy. And so, but it's all different levels. Like, I think that there's a lot more concerning politicians i think they were a lot more being uh uh because the m-o-s-s-a-d was able to figure out like well we got so many pervs over there we just get them on tape and tell them it's okay you can do it over here do it over there get them on tape and then we got blackmail because they don't want their people to know over there it's a crime so uh we got to change that yeah, we'll get some judges in there. We'll change some laws. We'll, we'll get some amendments. Uh, and we'll use the church because the church is always allowed. Oh, 10 years old, marrying material. It's time for her to get ready to have a baby and be a mama. <clears throat> the guy's 50 years old. Oh, that's okay. I just saw a sad, sad video of a girl being a soul too. It was like, fuck, I don't know. The guy was 55 to 85 years old. I don't know. He's older. 
and she was 10 and it, it, she was crying. I was horrible. It's like, fuck. But in poor, poor places, those people get, you know, when they're desperate for money and someone will take your kid and you can't barely feed your kid and they say they'll feed them. It's like, you know, a lot of these people are pushed to do things, but you always got to go internal. Your soul's always going to, but some souls, that you know, that is what you're supposed to do because that is the, the lesson. You're here to learn. You're here to learn about different things. So... It's not like you can judge things and say, well, they did the wrong thing. It's like they probably did exactly what they were supposed to do. As that's, you know, a lot of things are being played out. A lot of lessons. The universe, like I've said, wants all knowing. It wants everything. It wants to see it all. And, uh, you know, and some warriors are play it all. <laughs> I don't know. I'm that kind of warrior. I don't. I I. I don't know if I just have so much of the lessons inside of me that it's like never again, never again. Even this like sickness thing, uh, I I had this uh, dream memory thing. Um, it was after my brain injury, so it was, uh, but it was before I had um, gone through my dark night. But it was kind of leading up to it or something. Because I'm trying to think of the house I was in when I had this dream. But it was horrible. It was so horrible. It was so fucking real. And I know it was real. I know this really happened. I know it wasn't just a dream. Um, but I was with a bunch of other people. And we were walking out into a field. And the soldiers were shooting us. And I... Um, got shot a bunch of times, but I didn't die. And then I had to be taken into this room. And it was like, I was just laying on this cot in this room being left to die. And it was this really slow lingering death. It was horrible. And, um, my oldest daughter came in to see me, but it, she looked like my oldest daughter. So I could recognize her, I think. Um, because I felt like we looked like ourselves, <clears throat> but that wouldn't have been the life. But I was like, so I don't know, you know, I don't know if I was her husband and she was coming to say goodbye. I don't know if I was her sister, but there was some other relation where I saw this uh, really dramatic scene and my older daughter was there. So it's like, <clears throat> but all my kids, like I know I've got, you know, really strong uh, past life reference with them you know I think we all do we all have you know st strong uh tie the people who you have the biggest problems with are the people who you have the strongest ties with and that's why it's important for you to work on your your end of the problem because that's the only end you have uh, control over so your end is the part you can work on can't fix somebody else you can't make somebody else fix themselves or anything you can fix your end so you know if you're two ends of the rope and their end stays frayed you've still got to rebraid your end and no matter if it looks messy and clumsy that that's the end you have control over so that's the part where you need to do your work so anyways um so uh, but that was, oh my gosh, that was horrible. And then when they started this sickness thing going, you know, and trying to make people be long-term sick so that they could make money off of us, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want any of their, uh, that memory, that dream came back so strong in my head, or uh, that memory. And, and that is um, where we have these memories inside of us. Like, I know I am not going to kill somebody because I know how horrible it feels to hurt anybody and I'm I'm positive that I'm sure well I've killed people before we've all killed people before and we've all been killed before we've all had all the things happen all the things have happened to us all and so but I feel like that is an imprint it's it's a part of my imprint it's not something I'm here to learn I learned it and so it's a part of me and that's why you know I always thought it was weird how people need the bible it's like, what about, it's inside of you. What about that? Like, why would the, why would it make it? So if the book says, oh, which it does say, go out and kill people who don't agree with you. So 
uh, that gives them all this judgment and attitude towards everybody who doesn't agree with them. And so, um, that's all on purpose. But anyways, I really always like it. It's in, it's in your imprint. Everything, all your lessons, everything you know, every, all your experience is inside of you. You got to get in touch with that side of you because that is your real self. And so, you know, our real selves are here for this, this transition. And there is different realities being created, I think. But we are coming together as a collective. And, you know, in the book of, oh, I think it's the book of one, uh, where he talks about the creating of a collective. And this is the harvest. Oh, I saw somebody yesterday sharing a clip of David Wilcock. And uh, something he was saying about the solar flash. So he was talking, and I don't know if it was last weekend. I don't know if it was an old video. Pretty sure it's a recent video because it's hairdo. So he, um, he was talking about the solar flash. And in this little clip that I saw, he said that uh, it was supposed to happen in 2025. So we're about a year and a half out. He said, these solar flashes that keep coming, that they are like the preparation. They are getting us ready. And so that the big one, when it comes, it's going to be big, but we're going to be more ready for it energetically. Because all of these flashes that come in, see, it brings in this energy for people to have to face themselves. But so many people distract themselves from facing themselves. But so the energy comes in to make you face yourself then uh, the more people who do it, the more they're healing and growing and they're doing the work to head towards this age of Aquarius life. Mm -hmm. Honey, just a minute. Um, it's always around the same time. Just a minute. Let me finish and then um, let me finish this. Oh, girl. She's it's some of her. Oh, God, I love her so much. She's, oh, God, I don't ever want her to die. Oh, I don't ever want her to leave me. Um, God, I love her. She's just, uh, I, I've never been able to be so in tune with an animal where this is communication and stuff. And, and, and she's so much, oh, it's just so cute how she'll make different sounds and stuff and try and talk and, and not just say words or something, but it's more about, oh, 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 and yesterday, oh my God, this was the cutest thing because uh, I had to be outside with Jack because um, I'm trying to see where he goes to. So I take him out to, to go potty, not on, not on the lead. I put him on the lead thing when he just wants to be outside and play and it's cold and I don't want to go out there. And um, But when I take him out to go around and see, and we'll walk around. And so he gets super playful and he constantly is attacking Stella. And uh, but trying to play, not attacking her, but he tries to play, but he's just like... He's wild. And so then she went and played. So he just starts running as fast as he can, going as fast and fast. I was like, geez, I got to put him in the fucking dog races. This guy could win some money for us. And so he's um, taking off running. He's dug a whole yard. <laughs> he's made a big fucking tear up in the yard. And so um, uh, he, when he was doing it, I would like jump out like that. And he would go running and running and running. And so Stella started getting in on it. And, but she was going up. And she is the queen of the jungle. Man, when she goes and she starts doing certain things, I see so many other animals in her. And she has a certain behaviors and stuff. I'm telling you, she's not a dog. She's not like a typical dog. She's nothing dog about her. Uh, she is so, I don't know. She's otherworldly to me. Um, but she's the queen of the jungle in the way that she was doing it and the sounds that she was making and stuff. Oh my gosh, she's just the cutest. I wanted to run in and get my video so I could get it and share it. But I was like, I had to, because as soon as I would make a change like that, then it would have changed and I had to just enjoy it. It was really fun, uh, to watch and to see. And uh, so, you know, he uses all his energy going and then she just goes up like a, oh, and she, she like tries to do these chest bumps and these flip her head real quick. Kind of an alligator roll or something. I don't know. She does. It was really cool. And, but I was like, she is, um, she's just, yeah, so I think uh, dogs, you know, just uh, going into be a dog experience. It's a lot of fun and hyper and excitement. And love, 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 love. Just having fun, having fun. 
and you know she has a part of her but it is it's just another level and that was something that they were showing me so much when Trixie was here because she was just bouncing off the walls all the time and I would just be like what in the holy hell and um she was like that too like a tigger she just bounced everywhere and um and she was so anxious and uh, um but they had uh, shown me then, you know, like she's still as guard. She's here to guard and protect me. And that's when she got up too. It was to, to, when he was running around and I started doing that. She got in between us. She never lets anything. Uh, like if she lets somebody get close to me, if she totally trusts them because she, uh, she'll she stay in between. And uh, she's always like, you want to mess with her? You better get through me. That's just the way she is. And uh, so it was always being shown to me that she's a guard. She's here to protect me. And that, um, you know, she's my guardian for this period of time. And then they showed me that these other ones, that's a dog. That's a dog experience. And even when Trixie had come before, when her spirit came beforehand, it was like an adult woman. So, you know. I think that there's people who probably are fucking kicking and hitting their dog and it's really their grandpa, you know. They just don't realize because they don't think about life on that level. They don't think who they're really hurting. They're just irritated. And the grandpa being in the dog body, it would be, um, you know, would just be loving, you know, just want to love you, just want to love you, don't want you to feel bad. You know, but then, you know, all your relatives and stuff will come in in different parts to try and be there and stuff so anyways um so uh and I think she's here as a protector because I think that a lot of us who are here for bringing in this energy are protected through this period of time uh, because we are the light bringers we are the ones to talk to give direction towards the light when so many people are focused on the dark and the dark is being purged out, which is going to leave a lot of people feeling like a cripple. And so they need a new direction and they need a new focus because a lot of people are expecting this to be the end and they're going to be like, now what? Now what are we supposed to do? And there's a lot of us here that are going to be showing the way, the way showers. And it's because it's inside of us. It's in our imprint. It's, you know, it's like I was being prepared for this my whole life. And so it is giving the vision. And it's trippy, too, is because I didn't know about the CIA. I think it's the CIA files that talk about that in the creating of a reality and stuff. And so anyways, there's a lot of us here for creating this Age of Aquarius reality. And I think any of us that you would hear, we would all have a basic philosophy and because it's a certain energy and there would be the people who were supposed to be a part of that would have an understanding to certain things like they may not be completely you know all the way out into their awareness but they would still be in alignment with how you know the world should be and how people need to um it's like pull your your stuff into you don't go out and make the whole world suffer your problems. It's your problems or your problems, and you've got to learn how to deal with your problems. And and because we have a whole world of people who are just angry and blaming everybody else for their problems. And it's like, you know, we can't have a world like that. Look at what, I mean, we do have a world like that. And what does it bring us? It brings us chaos, anger, sadness, uh, division. Uh, murder I mean it's dark energy so we have to pull free out of that dark energy and uh, so those of us who are here for this energy that we're ushering in it is uh, you know the focus on healing because that's the only way out of the darkness is to let go of the darkness that has a hold of you you got to pull it off little by little scrape it it's like barnacle <laughs> file it uh you know do everything you can to get this dark energy off of you so that you can find your soul because your soul isn't dark energy the dark energy has come and got a hold of your energy because you got too caught up in the game you forgot who you were so they got a hold of you and they feed off of you 
confirmation. So, anyways, God, my lips are so chapped, too. Wild. Um, so, anyways, um, let me think what I was saying. <sighs> so, the, those of us who are here for this new, uh, this new age, that we can see it. We can understand. We can understand what is being done. We're creating a collective. And it isn't, you know, like my creation. It was always written in the stars. It was always going to be created. I'm just one of the cells, the souls that is here to participate in it. In whatever level. We're all at different levels. And so at the level that I'm here to is to, um, you know, stand on my own and wave my flag and be called crazy and uh, be laughed at and called, you know, all sorts of names. And then, um, but to stand strong, you know, to not, not be budged by the, uh, be, be like these other trees and plants that they're showing. There's, there's plants that keep getting up and running off. It's the funniest thing. And it's wild. Uh, but, you know, to be strong and stand in the storm and not let other people push you down and waver you, you know, and, and there's all sorts of energies. I mean, just like flipping through and then somebody starts dissecting your face on all these people and uh, making fun of it and just saying how hideous it is and why in the world would anyone want to try and do that? Like, oh, boy, they kick you. I'm always kicking you when you're down. And so anyways, but that's the kind of stuff where you got to be like, okay, I, you know, it may take a while. Like, I think it was affecting me for a few hours. I was like, God damn. It's like, geez, you're trying to come into harmony with your own face and trying to accept your own face that you struggled for your whole life with and then uh, that energy is going to come in and well you want to it, it's just it's just like a test and you know, but don't always think you know that you have to meet every test like oh well i should have not let it bother me at all no you gotta let it bother you you gotta work through it you gotta let yourself allow yourself to feel your feelings you know you gotta let out the steam you got to, you know, roll through whatever you're feeling. Don't hide from your feelings. Don't hide from who you are. Be true to yourself and feel your feelings. To sit there and say your feelings don't have validity just makes you have doubts about yourself. You know, how can you think that you are a stable individual if your feelings have no validity? So you have to allow yourself to trust yourself and to believe in yourself and you know and, and there's nothing wrong with getting mad sometimes like that's a human normal emotion that's emotion here for you but it's here for you to witness yourself too if you have to keep yourself in balance whatever that balance is and you know everybody has their own things i mean there can be somebody who it's perfectly acceptable to them you know when they get real mad that they you know, have a broken door out back and they go out and slam it with a, a hammer a hundred times to get out their energy. Like there's all different ways that people, you know, there's not a right way or a wrong way. It's your way. You're the one who has to get comfortable with that. You're the one who has to overlook people making fun of you and saying, well, you should have done it this way. You should have done it that way. Well, if you did it this way, you would be right. It's like, that is, that's a controlling judgmental person who says that there's all different ways. I mean, how can you have this many different souls and think we're all supposed to do it the same way? And why in the holy hell would the universe action be to try and make us do it all the same way? That would make no sense at all. So, the um, but the creating of this uh, this new reality is the energy. We're the energy. We're the ones who are making it. So it becomes what we are want, wanting to make it. And you know what David is? David was saying there's all these solar flashes coming in. And it's building up that energy and getting everybody to a certain place so that when the big one comes in, that really makes all the change. And um, that is when we're going to start, you know, the whole world will open up to us, the whole galaxy and stuff. Everything will change. And <clears throat> and then, um, it, but that see, that goes more into what I was thinking. Like this solar flash, everybody keeps being like this solar flash is about to go down. And yeah, I think the pole shift is it's the energetic shift and everything is shifting. Our stuff in the skies and everything is shifting in our reality. And it's shifting so much it's glitching. And in that Allison Coe video where she talked about that, 
it was somebody who went into that life as they are like a presenter of the reality and he said as this one is shifting away it is glitching it is like how we're all seeing and remembering because it's not real and so there's glitching happening and then it's like the lights are going to go off and then it's going to come on and we're going to be in a different reality and uh, so that's what the Allison Co thing was saying the David Wilcock thing was saying there's going to be all these flashes leading up to the big one and all this stuff is to create the the healing and the process towards enlightenment lightening your load letting go of the heaviness the changing your vibration letting go of things and it's wild i mean my weight just goes down by itself as i let go of things and stuff it's wild i'm telling you your body represents what you are going through and um and, it, you know, if you've got if you've got a lot of pounds that you're trying to get rid of, you, the healing will get rid of them. You don't have to work on the pounds. you got to work on the healing. And the healing will let go of the things you're holding on to. And so it just works like that. I mean, there's lots of people who went through all their weight loss and then still sat there at the end and was like, what in the hell am I doing? Like, I don't know. Everything's the same. I'll go through the same problems. It's like, yeah, you got to deal with the problems. Your, your weight isn't the issue it's your problems that are so anyways everybody's got to you know see it but i this is what i've been witnessing and so the um uh, but and to me i have said i think that there's these shifts there's these big things that are going to happen and it's shifting the energy and that energy shift when it goes the other way like everybody all of a sudden sees all the lies they already know and it's going to be something because they're going to have to rip some stuff out of people's hands. Like money, like jobs, like security. That stuff is going to be ripped out of people's hands. That's what we're in the process of. And that's so that they can um, let go. So uh, we're in the process of that part of that. And there's going to be a big dramatic one. And this countdown clock is still saying like the 27th. And if they're counting down to the money thing... There's been a whole bunch of stuff leading into this money thing. And there's more crashes going. There's more things going. There's a big thing going on the crypto stuff. There's all sorts of stuff going on. So the money thing is really happening. <coughs> I can't believe there's still people are like, oh, the banks always get bailed out. Not this time. Not this time. This is the jubilee. This is the turning of the energy. This is the... Uh, the golden age. This is when the money goes back to the people. It's a cycle. You got to let go of what you think, of what you always, what always was, is not what will be. And what always was was it, it, the past. Now we're moving towards the future. So this is a big change, and it has to do with abundance, and also it has to do with realizing that money isn't the abundance. It's security, it's uh, having your own food, healthy food, having your own home, your own family, you, you know, having your kids uh, taught what you believe, not what the government believes. So there's a whole bunch more that people are learning through this. And that all has to do with the changing. So that is this energy shifting. And there's certain incidences like the big reveal on medical that is going to cause so much outrage, so much anger, then it's meant to. It's meant to cause this. It's meant to create this change. And so that is where there's going to be so much anger. There's going to be, like, I swear to God, they're going to blow up some fucking Rite Aids and CVSs and shit, like medical places, hospitals. Like, there will be some fucking violence. No doubt about it. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if there would be hospitals that would be held hostage uh, with people I mean it's going to be nasty on certain places it's going to get really violent and really horrible and it's an energy it's you know these people lied and uh, their family members died and they're going to go for vengeance and uh, you know when you have a soulless world that doesn't understand the universe that this is all happening for a reason they'll play their part they'll create that angle so uh but the angles are what creates the design. It's what creates the whole, because we're, we're creating like a giant Mandela or something. Like we're weaving a giant 
blanket. Like everything is uh, woven in, in all of our experiences, create the design and stuff. So it needs the angles. Like the, the world, the, the energy relies on the angles. Um, so uh, the, the angles create the shifts, they create uh, change. So anyways, the, um, let me think. So we have, uh, but there's other realities being created at this time. And so, and then there's people who will leave and go back to their home reality, or they'll just go to, you know, home, wherever that is. And um, they may just go, you know, party off with uh, dead relatives. Like, it'll be all different. Everybody will just have different things that they'll do. But there's a lot of realities being created. And so, to me, it is the, the people who are going through this stuff, who do the healing, who become more focused on a certain energy that that is the creation of the age of Aquarius it is uh, changing priorities changing lifestyles changing uh, the way you interact with people you know uh, changing behaviors we're purging out of toxic behaviors and uh, toxic ways that we used to live we're letting go of that stuff we're doing our part in healing so to be all the people who are on that end of the rope the end of the rope where they took whatever problems they had and they just wove it into whatever that they needed it to be you know they wove it into a handle they wove it into something beautiful they took all the things that went wrong and made it into something beautiful and then the people who are down there on the frayed end of the rope who just keep letting it fray who just let go, who don't know what to do, they won't go into the new reality of, I mean, there's everybody will go to some reality, but the one I'm talking about, the one I'm here to talk about. So it will be a certain group of people that will go into the one I'm talking about. And so, but everybody will have a place to go. It won't be like, you know, nobody has a place to go. Everybody will have a place to go. But so, and then I don't know if that's when the big solar flash happens that we all just kind of go to our realities. And that's kind of like when the lights go out and come back on and we're in a different kind of reality. And it may not be dramatic. I mean, we may not be sitting there, you know, we're in a green forest one day, the lights go out and suddenly everything's pink. It may not be like that. It may come back on and look very similar. It's based on what we want. Uh, apparently, from what that one lady in the Allison Co. thing had said, that we're creating that right now by like going around and like, I love that. I love that. Oh, I love that. And that, like, I'm sure because there's so much love on those beautiful skies, even though, you know, they're killing us, that uh, with all the beautiful colors and stuff. So I'm sure that we're going to have some really beautiful colors and stuff in this new reality be like sunset colors and you know beautiful and iridescent and shiny so I'm sure it's going to be uh, magical looking um, but it will be like sparkly you know we'll just like the lights will go out and we'll come back on and be like oh my god everything looks so beautiful oh my god I feel so good all that energy is just going to be gone that heaviness that darkness and it is um, then you know that's when the the building of the reality will begin because it's still going to be work. There's still going to be work. I mean, we're building a completely new existence. We're taking, uh, we're, it's like always what I see is like <clears throat> this ravaged soil, all this brokenness and, and that dirt. And then out of the dirt comes this beautiful blue flower. And so that is what we are. We're the transition we're the ones who are here to, you know, to be the blue flower that comes up out of the dirt. All of us in all different areas and all different communities. There's already people who are getting started. And so it was going to be a, a blossoming of new life, of new, and it will be an overall common, uh, a common, it's like a common theme or something. It's like, Kind of like it's been written, uh, they signed the contracts for peace treaties and stuff because there will be peace on earth. So it will be like an overall energy 
of peacefulness of you know there won't be creepy people like that energy will come back eventually but it's way 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 far and it's like the next new age well, that would be when that energy had creeped back in so towards the end of the age it will be the infiltration and then you know it would go back into a darkness but i don't know because up when you get up into the higher vibe it doesn't go back into that like like in the Pleiades, it wouldn't be like that there would be a darkness. Like everybody, once you get to a certain level, it's just you get to stay in that joy. And that darkness it is, it doesn't exist anymore. So we go in, and that's why you got to let go of all your darkness. Because darkness doesn't exist in that higher realm. But in other cycles, that it would always be light leads to dark, dark leads to light. It would always go. Like that's where we were leaving though that cycles but if there's an old earth that stays behind that continues that cycles then it would be uh, if things were going good but supposedly everything's just going to go bad and go dark and then it's going to fizzle out so um i don't know but we are going to be on the soul of the earth we're going to be on the ascension part we're going to be on the part that's going forward you know t to our light bodies but it's like we're going through the transition of realizing we are our light bodies. So, and, and he said, and I've heard this a bunch of times about, there's going to be a bunch of people who are going to seem like superheroes and stuff uh, because of their abilities. And because of this, um, to me, it is the beginning to understand uh, that you are the, the hologram, that you're really the energy. When you can get that into your mind, you have so much more control when you understand that what matter is so there's so it's to me it's like a transition it's a development stage and it is like where you start becoming superheroes and stuff and it's because you have let go of the idea of matter and the control it has over you letting go of the concept of flesh and blood so it's through that uh through that development stage that leads us into that but so the age of aquarius for where we're headed is about a, a reality <clears throat> that is about love and unity and abundance and you know there's no dog eat dog because you have everything you could possibly need but you have it because you are in sync in harmony with the with the um planet with the universal consciousness of that energy you are in harmony so in order to be in harmony then you are you're not an angle you are you're going with the flow and so it is creating the collective of that energy so we become in a, in a, i think you know i i, I think there's going to be our communication is going to be telepathy like okay, i've been talking telepathy my whole life so <clears throat> i know that that's real and I think that so many people are going to go towards that. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that are going to be changing. and But it's all going to be through stages of development. But this is a creation of a reality. And that is why, you know, you have to make your your point of your, your point of destination of where it is you're headed. And you're, you have it. You have all the signs around you where you're headed. So you have to be determined. You have to get behind the wheel, you, you know, and take charge of your life. And if you want to go into the, the bridging across, the transition into the age of Aquarius, then you, um, you know, you got to get behind the wheel. You got to take control of um, your healing of your destination you're headed towards love and unity then you got to do the work to get there you know you got to learn how to love the people who drive you crazy and and then you got to realize that like the people who come into life to uh push you that is they're, they're there to help you push you in that direction not to uh, set you off they're here to nudge you in the right direction and so you just need to start realizing that the people who are there that are the most challenging to you are really the most helpful without you being aware of that. So anyways, that's the universal energy that is leading you, giving you direction. 
but it's up to each soul to do the work. It's up to each soul to find that that place in themselves. So anyway, Stella's on the move. So I had, I, I think there was more stuff I was going to say. Um, I can't remember though. But anyways, that's a lot to think about. And so I will leave you with that and I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye.